When growing plants in the garden, you want them to be as healthy as possible so that they can perform their best. Healthy plants are more likely to be pest and disease free and in the case of vegetables, they are going to be more nutritious for us as well. And in the case of growing cut flowers like I do on my farm, flowers are going to be more saleable if they are healthier and they don't show any signs of pest or disease damage. Using a compost extract can help to boost the health and vitality of plants. This makes them more resistant to pests and diseases, makes them more nutritious and better quality. In this video, I will explain what compost extract is, the potential benefits and how to make and apply it in your garden. So what is compost extract? Compost extract puts beneficial organisms and nutrients into suspension in water from good quality compost, which we can then use to apply onto plants and as a soil drench. It's important to use really good quality compost because some composts do not contain the beneficial organisms that we are looking for to apply onto our plants. Not all composts and compost extracts are created equal, so we need to be mindful of this. I'm gonna go on to composts and which ones we want to be using for compost extracts later on in this video. The act of applying compost teas coats the leaves of our plants with beneficial organisms and also puts nutrients in place on the leaf for the plants to take up. The coating of beneficial organisms on the leaves prevents pathogens from taking hold and increases competition on the leaf. This should mean that it's really difficult for pathogens to take hold on the leaf and cause damage to our plants. So what is compost and why is it not all created equally? When picturing compost you probably imagine something like this, a dark coloured kind of homogenous looking material that is dark in colour and doesn't really smell of a lot. There is no real definition of what compost is and there are so many different ways of making it. Compost can be made using so many different types of ingredients and different processes as well which results in a vastly different end product. Compost is the breakdown of organic matter by microbes and we take things like wood chips, leaves, plant material, straw, and we put them all into a pile and they get broken down by things like bacteria, fungi, protozoans, nematodes, and small insects. All of these microorganisms break down that organic matter and release the nutrients to fuel their own growth and metabolism. The release of nutrients for the metabolism of the microbes doesn't just benefit the microbes, it also benefits the plants that may be growing in and around the compost. The breakdown of the organic matter into the nutrients for the microbes results in the nutrients becoming plant available. So that is why we want to be building really great compost for our plants to thrive in. I'm going to outline some different types of compost that might be beneficial to use in our compost extracts and some that aren't going to be beneficial so that you know which compost to use when you are coming to make your own compost extracts. The first is thermophilic compost, which is what you see behind me here. This compost pile was made up the other week when I was clearing beds out on my flower farm. And as the microbes get to work on all of this material that I've put in here, and as, as long as I've got adequate moisture in there, then it will start to generate heat because of the activity of the microbes. Thermophilic piles really want to get up to above 65 degrees Celsius, and that is the temperature that kills pathogens and also kills uh, weed seeds or any kind of seeds in the compost pile as well. So we go through three different processes of turning and hopefully all parts of the pile will reach that magic number of 65 degrees to kill off those pathogens and weed seeds. Then once the pile is has been up to temperature, then we will let it cool and we cure it for a few months. Curing the compost pile allows different microorganisms to colonise this pile, such as fungi, which like to colonise the pile once it's cooled down a little bit. They start to work on, on the materials containing carbon and they are really beneficial to us in our soils. So we want to kind of rest our piles to make sure that we've got a really good diversity of microorganisms in our compost extracts or in our compost and therefore our compost extracts. And um, this is going to be a really good stuff to use for our extracts. One thing you have to be careful of is council waste or municipal waste compost. These are also thermophilic processes, but they are done in huge volumes and at very, very high temperatures. 
and they are not very diverse in microbes and they contain a lot of bacteria as a result. So usually when you pick up some compost like this, it'll still be steaming, it'll still be hot and maybe it'll have a bit of a smell to it. Good compost shouldn't really smell of anything. It should, if it smells like anything, it should smell like a forest floor or, you know, just that really rich organic matter smell. But you shouldn't be able to smell a very strong smell coming from your compost. Municipal or council waste compost that is made in very large quantities and at very very high temperatures isn't something that we want to be using for our compost extracts as it just doesn't contain the diversity that we want for our compost extracts and to benefit our plants. It's also possible that there are some residual chemicals in those composts and we don't want to be potentially spraying those on our leaves so stay clear of the council or municipal waste compost. Bagged composts that we get from the garden centre have been sterilised prior to sending them out to the customer so we don't want to be using these for compost extracts because they don't contain any uh, beneficial microbes, they may contain some bacteria and things like that, but they definitely don't have a, the diversity that we are looking for in our compost extracts. They're great to use as a base for compost, uh, seed starting mixes and potting on mixes, and we can add some bi biological inoculants along the way, but these are not good to use as compost extracts. Vermicompost is a fantastic product to use for compost extracts and I have made a couple of videos on this I will pop a link to one up in the banner above and I have been growing worms here on my farm for a couple of years now and I absolutely love using worms and worm compost on my farm. Vermicompost is created when worms break down organic matter and they produce a product called worm castings or worm poo. The worm's gut is full of beneficial microbes. So when they take something in via their mouths, passes through their gut and comes out the other end, all of those beneficial mi microbes come off into the castings and they are there in the castings, ready to be utilized by plants and other microorganisms. Vermicompost has also been found to contain plant growth hormones and also pathogen suppressing substances so that using them amongst our plants is going to help maintain health, increase health and vitality of our plants. Johnson Sioux composting is another great way to create material for our compost extracts. Last year I made myself a Johnson Sioux bioreactor and it's taken up until now for the compost to be ready so I've just started using it as a foliar spray on my plants and also as a seed inoculant. I'll put a link up here to how I designed that Johnson Sioux bioreactor and how it works um, but basically it is a static method of creating compost so we're not turning the compost but we are providing air channels within the structure of the compost pile to make sure that all areas of the pile are, have got access to oxygen. And because we're not turning the pile, we're not disturbing the fungal hyphae. So this helps to create fungally dominated compost, which is really great for using um, in all sorts of amendments and compost extracts, compost teas and potting soils. I've been talking a lot about compost extracts and you might be wondering how it differs from compost tea. Compost tea is probably a term that you hear a bit more often than compost extract, but they do differ. So I want to clear that up for you guys and hopefully there won't be any confusion between what is a compost tea and what is a compost extract. Like I said at the start of the video, a compost extract is beneficial microbes and nutrients in suspension in water that we can use to spray onto our plants or use as a soil drench. This differs from compost tea in that we are just taking the compost material, putting it in a bag and agitating it so that we release those beneficial microbes and nutrients into the water. And we're doing that for about five minutes or so. We're just massaging the bag uh, and we're going to be using the water afterwards. So it's a quite a quick process and we can just do it there and then on the spot as we are about to create our foliar sprays. Compost teas are a little bit different because we are brewing them for a longer period of time. We are going to be actively aerating them with uh, oxygen. So we're going to be using an air stone or some kind of air pump and we might add uh, food items in there as well to feed the microbes in the brew so that they can multiply and we can grow the numbers of organisms that are within the compost tea brew. 
During the brewing process, we are able to increase microbe numbers, but we might decrease diversity because the more opportunistic microbes that are able to multiply quite quickly, like bacteria, are probably going to increase in numbers more than slower to reproduce microorganisms. So we might end up with lots more Oh, there's a spider crawling across my lens. I'm not sure if you can see that. So we might end up with lots more in terms of numbers, but less diversity. Whereas in a compost extract, we might end up with quite a lot of diversity, but with less numbers to go onto our plants. Compost teas are usually brewed for kind of 24, 48 hours. And what we really want to do is not let them go anaerobic. So that's why we are using the air stone to get oxygen in there because if we let the brew go anaerobic, then we start brewing potentially pathogenic organisms and things that aren't going to be good for our plants. Without a microscope, it's quite difficult to tell whether your compost tea has gone the right way or not. So I prefer to use compost extract because it's quite fail safe. And if we know that we've got a good quality compost that is being made in the right way, then we are able to just put those beneficial organisms onto our plants. And we can't really go wrong unless our compost has, be, has gone drastically wrong. If we have good quality compost, then you might be asking, why not you just use that good quality compost in my seed starting mixes or in on my beds um, and the reason why i think it's a good idea to use compost extracts is because we can make a small amount of compost go a lot further so if i'm making a batch of compost here and i only have a small amount available i maybe don't have enough to spread over all of my field here but i want to maximize the benefit of that compost that i've spent a long time creating so using a compost extract can help me to spread those microbes across this whole field and allow them to benefit the pl each plant individually. They say that one teaspoon of good quality compost contain up to one billion bacteria. So if we can help to spread those out onto our plants, then we are going to be really helping them out with a boost of immunity and plant health. So now that we're aware that compost extract is a great thing to be using on our plants, in our gardens and on our farms, then we want to know how to make the stuff. It's really easy and you only need basic equipment that you've probably already got in order to make it. First of all, you need a bucket of water and the water wants to be the volume that you're going to be using in, in your compost extracts. So I use a backpack sprayer, which is 15 litres. So I will pour 15 litres of water into a bucket. If you have access to rainwater, then that's perfect because we don't need to do anything in terms of dechlorination. But if you're going to be using tap water, then you need to make sure that you are using something to tie up the chlorine that is in the tap water. Water companies will add chlorine to our water to protect us from pathogens because we don't want to be getting sick from whatever might be kind of brooding in the pipes that come to our houses and um, so we want to put either humic acid or vitamin C which are two ways to tie up chlorine in our water and we want to be dropping those into the water you can look those up and find out how much of the stuff you want to be putting into your water to dechlorinate it usually with humic acid it's enough just so that the color of the water changes slightly to a slight light brown color and with the vitamin c it's usually about one drop per liter and then our water is safe to use and it's not going to kill off the beneficial microbes that are in our composts you will also need a mesh bag and here in the uk the lots of the supermarkets have started selling the um, reusable mesh bags that you can put fruit and veg in and those are really great for putting our compost teas in they usually cost about 30p from uh, Sainsbury's or Asda or wherever you're shopping and you can also get them on Amazon as well. Then obviously you're going to need a handful of good quality compost so make sure you've got yourself some um, Johnson Sioux compost if you're making Johnson Sioux compost yourself or some thermophilic compost if you've made that yourself or you can buy living compost from different suppliers. I actually sell vermicompost on my website it isn't up there at the moment but I will be clearing out my uh, worm bins shortly and relisting that worm compost up on my website so you can purchase there and uh, if you sign up to my emails uh, on my website the pop-up will come up as you go onto my website you can sign up to my mailing list and I will email you when the vermicompost comes back in stock or there are other companies such as uh, climate compost um, the compost club and also 
eco thrive all do living composts so what you want to make sure is that the composts are living and they're full of beneficial microbes usually it's a major selling point for these companies so you'll be able to um, figure out whether it's got good microorganisms in it or not then you'll need either a backpack sprayer or a watering can or if you're using um, this extract as a soil drench then you don't need any kind of watering can or backpack sprayer you just need a tray to put the water in so that you can put your plants into the tray and let them soak up the compost extract optional extras you can also put other beneficial biostimulants in the water such as if you're putting the humic acid in already to dechlorinate the water then that also has other benefits on plant growth immunity and plant health and you can also put things like fish hydrolysate there's a video up here that I made a while ago about fish hydrolysate uh, seaweed feed is really great that helps with plant immunity plant growth you see where I'm going here with these biostimulants they're all just amazing things that we can use to help give our plants a little bit of a leg up so you can choose to use some of those or you can choose just to use purely compost extract it's up to you so once we've got our bucket of water ready we want to be putting our handful of compost into our mesh bag and putting it into the water then what I do is I massage this the compost in the bag for five minutes or so and kind of swirl it around and just agitate it a bit to make sure that those beneficial microbes are coming off of the organic matter coming out of the compost and going into suspension in the water then once the compost has been kind of swishing around in the water for about five minutes we can decant the water into a backpack sprayer or into a watering can to apply onto our plants if you're using a soil drench then you can tip the water out into a shallow tray and place your plant trays your cell trays or your pots into the water and just leave them there for a while for them to soak up the water um, before you either plant them out or maybe you just want to give them a little bit of a, a watering a bit of a boost i usually use compost extracts as a root soak before i plant out all of my plants in the field so it just helps to reduce transplant shock and puts all of those beneficial organisms right where they need to be at the plant roots in the field so I feel like that's a really good start for my plants and I really enjoy doing that because I think it really helps them with my backpack sprayer that is a 15 litre one I can usually do all of this field just with one full backpack sprayer uh, so I'll usually do my front flower field maybe with one tank full and then this field with one tank full and it will cover the whole area so you can be quite liberal with it but you can you only really need to put a thin layer on uh, when you are spraying compost extracts it doesn't need to, you don't need to be going crazy on each plant obviously if you're going to be using a watering can that's going to kind of come out a little bit quicker than you would do with a backpack spray so you might either want to use more of it or just be a bit more sparing with the way that you're watering with the watering can when using a backpack sprayer you want to kind of be mindful that the stomata on the underside of the leaves can also take up larger nutrients so if you make sure that you spray it underneath the leaves as well as on top of them then you'll be getting maximum benefit from your compost extracts the best time to apply compost extracts is either in the morning or in the evening when it's a little bit overcast and kind of the humidity is quite high so days like today where there's not a lot of wind there's not a lot of sun exposure and we're able to kind of put those compost extracts on a plant and they're going to sit there for a while to allow the leaf to uptake any nutrients and microbes that it wants to uptake i usually try to apply compost extracts every two to four weeks here on the flower farm it can seem like a very big job but it doesn't take very long at all and every two to four weeks you're just giving those plants a little bit of a top up of nutrition and beneficial biology and it should really help to produce healthy plants throughout the season i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you found it useful and informative i have started writing blog posts to go along with lots of my videos now so if you want to check out the blog post which might be in a little bit more detail then you can have a look at the link down in the description and hopefully that will help you out to provide you with a reference on how to make compost extracts thanks so much for watching this video guys and i hope to see you on the next one